the flight test. I'm Josh. And I'm TJ. And one thing we love with flight tests is getting people started in aviation, whether it's multi-rotors or fixed wing. Yeah. And uh, with fixed wing, it's very easy. You follow a build video, you get out and you fly, or you just put it in the air. And we have a lot of really good videos to instruct you how. But with multi-rotors, it's a little bit different. Yeah, a little, little bit more in depth. I mean, even with the planes, most of us just plug and play, yeah. which is great. Multi-rotors, 90% of it can be plug and play, but you're still gonna have to get into some soldering. Yeah, if you wanna get advanced multi-rotors, you gotta be passionate about building. Right, right. Yeah. and for, for most people, they like building almost as much as flying. Absolutely. You're going to always be tuning, always be tweaking, always be upgrading with multi-rotors. Right. So what we want to do, especially for you beginners, is give you six quick tips for a successful quad build. So probably one of the most important things and the first thing we want to talk about is knowing how to solder and how to treat the wires that you're soldering. Yeah, most definitely. You know, when you're soldering, put the heat to the pad or the wire you're using, bring the solder to it. Yeah, let the solder work for you. And also, if the solder doesn't look good, it's probably not a good joint. Yeah, you want it to be shiny. Shiny, not a lot of excess of solder. Don't use a lot of heat. Yeah, and not extra solder, but also not extra wire too. Only strip off the wire that you need to cover the pad. If you have too much wire, those can kind of come over and touch. And when you crash a multi-rotor or you're working with it, those wires can cross and it can short things out. Most definitely, especially if you're using like a naze board or something with a through hole. Yeah. Don't just look at one side, look at both sides. You may have just a little bit of wire on the top, but yeah. on the bottom, the wires might be able to touch. You're gonna notice the proper amount of heat and the proper amount of solder is gonna give you enough to solder to flow through holes, mm -hmm. and it's just gonna look really appealing. Yeah, it looked like, if you got a through hole, it'll look like a little cone and it should be shiny. Even on Amazon, you can actually purchase solder practice kits, but you always end up with extra wire anyway. Way. Right. Keep those extra bunches of wire and practice on them. If you have a crashed multi-rotor lane in the corner, uh, you can always practice on that too. Yeah, and if you're new to the hobby, chances are you're trying to learn how to fly with something small like an inductrix. Yes. While you're doing that, get some of these practice solder kits. Learn how to solder while you're learning how to fly. They both go hand in hand. Yeah, the better you can solder, the quicker you'll be able to build, field repair, things mm -hmm. like that. You're gonna have a great experience in the hobby. Most definitely. So another thing is installation of your electronic parts, right? Yeah, yeah, so I mean the carbon fiber is conductive. Yeah. So if you just lay your ESCs right on it and there's no insulation on your ESC, you're gonna have a bad day. It's gonna be a bad thing. How do we uh, how do we insulate it? Uh, you can either use standoffs or one like your flight controllers, power distribution boards, or just something as simple as using a piece of electrical tape. Electrical tape is wonderful. Keep it in your flight box so if you have to do a field repair, you always have a way to insulate. Also, speaking of insulating and, and keeping things up touching, when you plug in your uh, ESC to your motor, you have three wires, make sure you don't have any brass showing that touches. Yeah. Oftentimes that'll simulate a faulty ESC or a faulty motor. And speaking of motors, one common thing that so many people do is destroy their motors by driving that screw up into the windings, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, at least once a week here, we have somebody send something in that, you know, the motors aren't working, and we look at it, and there's a screw right up into the motor windings. So knowing the exact size of the screw that you need to use for your motors. Yes is ideal. And keep in mind, a lot of advanced high performance motors are also called low profile motors, which means you have a very little distance between where the screw goes in to hold it and the windings. It's gonna be a millimeter sometimes. Yeah. So using the proper screw depth is really important. All of our kits we have in our build videos, recommended screw lengths, don't neglect that part because if you unfortunately go into the windings, you're not only gonna destroy your motor, but you're gonna avoid your warranty. Yeah. One thing that I do that's just as easy as just taking a flashlight while you're screwing the motor, motor screw up in and you can see the, the threads, you know, an extra three seconds, may save you a lot of headache and get you in the air a lot sooner. Absolutely. If you notice that your motor is cogging and kind of shimmering back and forth, check to make sure your yeah. screw's not touching your windings. Also check to make that sure the brass connections aren't touching either. Right. Now, if you're advanced in soldering and you solder directly to the control board, make sure you've isolated those that they don't touch because oftentimes the pads are very close together. Yeah. So we talked a lot about screw length. Uh, mm -hmm. Securing those screws is really important yeah. too. Yeah, these, these multi-rotors, I mean the flight control boards are really good but you may have some little vibrations. Yeah. And with those vibrations, the screws can become loose. So one thing that we can do to help keep those screws in is Loctite. Loctite. Now there's different brands of Loctite. There's also different colors and those colors mean something. Do not use red. Red is permanent, so think red, you're dead. Yeah, and with uh, these aluminum screws that we mostly use now, if you use red, chances are you're not getting that screw back. Yeah. So use the blue. The blue stuff is what you want to, to yep. put on. And keep in mind, Loctite, the more you put on, does not mean a stronger joint. Uh, it's actually when you screw this in and it takes the absence of air is when it gets hard. Yeah. When it's out in the open, it stays like a puddle, it stays wet. So just doing a lot of Loctite isn't necessarily needed. Uh, very small dab right on the threads, screw it in, and you're done. All right, so we talked about screw length, we talked about Loctite, we talked about solder joints. Yeah. Uh, one thing you want to do through this whole process is check your work constantly with a multimeter. Yeah, and it you don't really have to know how to use this whole thing. There's one <laughs> setting and it's easy. It's either beep or no beep. So if you hear this, 
you know you're shorted out. And if you plug a battery in, you're gonna get some magic smoke. Now this is so important because whether you're soldering up a naze board with all the little puddles really close together, you can go back through those and check and make sure that you don't have a short. Yeah, so whenever you're going to check the continuity, you know, you can go through and check every red and black point on your ESCs, on your power distribution board, but if you just simply do the ones on your LiPo, we have no long beep right now. So, I mean, your LiPo is gonna power your ESCs, yeah. your VTX, everything. And you have a so you have a positive and a ground right there. Right, and that's the, the, the easiest way. Now, while you're building, you can check each individual yeah. part, which that's exactly what I suggest <laughs> to do. But when you get done, before I plug my LiPo in, I do one last check and we know for sure how we're gonna do. That's also a very handy tip for if you're doing a field repair. So say you crash, you have to swap out a motor, an ESC, something right. like that. Having a multi-reader in your field kit is so important because like what you just said, you go right to the positive yeah. and the negative, you field checked it. Checking it point after point, so you do a step like solder up one ESC. Before you go ahead and put that on, go ahead and check it out. Because say you do go to this and you find a short, now you gotta backtrack through your whole entire frame and spend all that time. So checking it as you go along is gonna keep your stuff working really good and make sure you have a good solid Build in the end. Multi meters are not expensive, they're a great investment. Yes. So, one thing that everyone's tempted to do is to leave their props on or put their props on prematurely in a build. Don't do it. There's so many professionals, if you look at their hands, they're going to have stitches somewhere. And, and even a professional pitcher recently <laughs> yeah. had to sit out a couple games. Yeah, in the World Series. Yes. Which and, is not fun. And we lost. Yeah. It's all your fault. <laughs> 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 but so, seriously though guys don't don't be tempted it, yeah. it takes you know even if it takes two minutes yes you know that that could be two hours in an ER yeah and make sure when, when you spin up your props or run in the right direction like you said you can do that with a piece of tape right. uh, but also check out your gyros when you move it around and everything because up until you put the props on that's the point when you confirm my gyros are working properly my motors are spinning the right way uh, when these things go and say a gyro is backwards they just don't not fly they jump in the air and, and jump around they get violent they get very violent right. and, and bad things happen. So make sure you take your time, put the props on the very end when you're absolutely satisfied. And even when you test fly, step back. Don't hover over it. Don't try to test fly it inside of a building. Take it outside, step back a good 20 feet. The further the better. Yeah. You, you have range on that radio. It moves quickly. Yeah. Line of sight test first and then FPV. Yes. So just for a recap, friends, make sure you know how to solder. Check out the links below for more information on that. Yeah, lock tight correct length of the screws for your motors. Don't put your props on till the very end. Use a multimeter. And have fun. Yeah, we really wanna thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for your support. Now, if you guys are new to this hobby, you want a really good build experience, check out our video links below. We have quads matched up with build videos. They'll give you a great experience. Always something new. See you next time.